For the fourth problem in the gas forming reaction uh, worksheet, we get calcium carbonate and sulfuric acid. Notice that they tell us this is solid calcium carbonate. Right? They tell us that for two reasons. Number one, so that we know that it is not aqueous, uh, kind of unnecessary because calcium carbonate would not be soluble in water anyway. But it also lets us know that you can picture this differently. You can picture dropping a piece of solid calcium carbonate into a beaker that has sulfuric acid. So, calcium carbonate and sulfuric acid, which would be aqueous, turn into what? What kind of reaction is this? We have a carbonate and an acid. So, a carbonate plus an acid turns into carbon dioxide gas plus water plus a salt. The salt would be the combination of leftovers, calcium and sulfate. So I need to write this in the form that it is in the beaker. I've got my solid piece of calcium carbonate. My sulfuric acid is broken up into ions, hydrogen ions and sulfate ions. I'm going to make my carbon dioxide gas in my water. And my salt, calcium sulfate, I need to remember, calcium sulfate would not be soluble. The rule for sulfates is that they're soluble except for silver, mercury, and lead, plus the heavy group two, which include calcium, barium, and strontium. So calcium sulfate does not break up into ions. So when I eliminate spectators and write the net ionic equation, take a look and you see there's nothing that is only on, or excuse me, that is on both sides of the arrow. Everything is unique. Since this was given to me as a solid, and this formed a solid, I never have the ions around to cancel anything out. So I end up with the exact same equation. It's not necessary to write these state functions, but I think that they make it pretty clear about what's going on and why these are all included in the net ionic equation.